I was addicted to social media, and so I quit. For good. <laughs> Have you ever felt like you are wasting your time on social media? Have you ever felt like the need to compare yourself to others and felt inferior and felt like you are not living a good and satisfying life? Have you ever felt like you were being bullied or have you even had suicidal thoughts because of social media? Maybe you haven't thought about it in direct connection to it, but let me tell you, there are some pretty scary statistics on those kinds of things and I'm going to share them with you a little bit later on in this video. In fact, I have felt a number of these things throughout my time on social media and I've primarily used Facebook, although I let go of that a couple of years ago, and then Instagram and of course YouTube. Although YouTube is this kind of like gray area, it's not really considered social media by some people. For example, I personally like to use it as an educational, inspirational tool and sometimes um, for entertainment. But what I felt when I used social media was, yeah, it was pretty bad. I spent hours and hours a day on social media, scrolling through meaningless content, comparing myself to other people, feeling unsatisfied with my life because other people were living a better, more dreamy life than I did. And my anxiety was sky high. Like I felt very nervous and I felt very anxious all the time because I was just overrun and overloaded with content, short form content mostly, and just a lot of information in one place. Of course, I took the occasional break here and there, which lasted a couple of weeks and helped me get back to myself a little bit better. But as soon as I got back to social media, I just wasn't able to control and limit my time on it and thus falling back into old habits. And there's a reason behind that. I don't know if you've seen the documentary on Netflix called The Social Dilemma, but it goes into detail about all the mechanisms and all the things that are in place behind social media and that can keep you engaged and hooked coming back to the platform and staying on it as long as you possibly can. And that is actually kind of perverse. You see, of course, you are a powerful human being that has a lot of potential and has willpower, but there's only so much you can do against literally hundreds of people that are designing a platform to keep you engaged and hooked for as long as possible on that platform. There are marketing specialists, psychologists, behavioral scientists, and a lot of other roles that help these platforms keep you engaged and hooked as long as possible and to spend a lot of time going down this kind of like Alice in Wonderland style rabbit hole where you lose yourself. And there are actually some crazy st statistics out there as well, which of course I'm going to link down below so you can check them out. There are a lot, so I'm only going to name a few. Approximately 4.7 billion people on this planet are using social media. That's a little bit over half the total global population, which is insane. The number two reason why people spend time on social media is to spend their spare time on it because they don't really know what to do. Instead of going out and spending time in nature, exploring the world or meeting with people, friends, family, whatever kind of people or reading a book for that matter that can educate you and help you get better in life, people spend their time on social media because they don't know what else to do. On average, people spend 147 minutes, that's over two hours, on social media per day, and that's the global average. 30% of Americans, Americans alone, feel as though they are addicted to social media. And that just shows you that social media addiction is real and that we need to start to see it as such. We need to start helping people get over their social media addiction and help them see that they actually are addicted. Because let me tell you, when you waste your life away and when you feel as though a Dementor from Harry Potter sucks your soul out because you're spending hours and hours a day on the couch laying there scrolling through meaningless content, it's just not fun. And sometimes you don't even realize it until months, maybe even years have passed. Some people never realize it. This video is supposed to help you with that because first of all, you're not alone. Ideally, you would realize that you may even have a social media addiction or at least that you're wasting more time than you would like to. Just, you know, getting over your spare time as we spoke before. And second of all, I want to show you that 
You are fighting a battle that you can hardly win by yourself because there are so many people and mechanisms in place designed to keep you locked in for as long as possible. I also want you to see that social media has the potential to negatively affect your brain. You see, whenever you watch your content on social media, on any platform, dopamine is released by the brain. It's this kind of like instant gratification dopamine release that you get. Now, if you continuously get those dopamine releases, you will in time need more and more of those releases. That in turn makes your social media addiction reality and makes it worse. You will feel the need to spend more and more time on social media because you're looking for that dopamine release, not even consciously, but subconsciously because your brain is steering you in that direction. Another negative effect on your brain and in turn on your life is very prevalent in most people and that is a distorted reality. We see this kind of like perfectly painted sculptured picture on social media, this life that is very curated and we think that that is reality. Our perception is manipulated and now just think about children and teenagers whose brains are still developing, whose realities are still being formed. They are seeing all of these false images, all of these false lifestyles on there. They have manipulated expectations about reality and life and in turn strive for lives that are unattainable for most and that aren't even reality for most. Of course, we could keep talking about the negatives of social media and I don't want this to be a doomsday only video for, for social media because there are some positive aspects to it as well. First and foremost, I met some great people on social media that I still consider friends today. Building relationships on social media is possible. However, we have to be careful because, like I said, curating, curating an image is very, very easy. And, you know, there are a lot of people on social media that may have malintent or may be there to, you know, cyber bully others and whatnot. But that's beside the point. The second is that social media can also be a place of, you know, spreading your content, making content, being creative. That's what I did. First of all, with YouTube, I started out with YouTube. I then kind of like steered off that path and went to Instagram, created a lot of reels and all of that stuff before I decided to quit because of my health and because of my well-being. And I would say that social media does also have the potential to help you with your mental health, to help you with your, you know, illnesses and, and whatever you have. It can actually do that because you can find other people that go through the same things. You can find some inspiration. You can find some information that may even help you get out of whatever you're fighting currently. Now that brings me to the end of this video. And honestly, I don't have all the answers. I'm not you, so I'm not able to execute everything for you, but what I can do is advise you. Look at your statistics, look at your screen time, evaluate how much time you spend on social media and how it makes you feel. The next step would be to maybe take a break here and there, try and see how it feels for you, and then you can go from there. You can definitely, definitely delete your Instagram, your TikToks, whatever it is. You don't have to be on social media. There is no rule book saying that you have to be on social media. There are so many other ways to communicate with your friends, your family, and your loved ones. You can text, you can phone call, you can video call, and yes, you can still meet in person. What I do know is that you got this, and I want to let you know that please, please always remember, life is so much more than social media. Thank you for watching.